the formidable robot. I cannot stand Patrick in the sixth season. None of us can. At the time I was working on this season as a storyboard artist, we got several scripts that showed just how much of an example of a ruined concept he has become. None of the animators, artists, or even the writers themselves liked him, but the higher-ups at Nick wanted to emphasize just how stupid he truly was instead of, you know, making a well-written character. Patrick started off as a lovable dummy, who didn't have the greatest attitude but had comedic moments to make up for it, to a sociopathic piece of junk. There's literally an episode where he admits to Spongebob, to his face, that he acts idiotic on purpose just to fuck with him. But enough ranting. That's not what I came here to share. When the 8th season came, most of us got together to make a project, to blow off some steam, excluding the original voice actors, because we didn't feel like they'd want to be involved. A project where we finally gave Patrick his comeuppance. I still have the storyboard slides that I did, and a copy of the script, thankfully. However, I have no idea who still has the finished product. Might be in the vault somewhere for all I know, but I could be wrong. I can show the storyboards as those are confidential, but I can at least prove that I have the text. This is the official plot to what you deserve. The animation begins with Spongebob walking up to Patrick's rock and knocking. The rock then opens, and Spongebob wraps his arms around Patrick, squeezing tightly before letting go. He asks Patrick if he's ready to go clamboarding with him, to which Patrick replies by telling him that he needs to get his gear first. Squidward is standing outside of his tiki house, sipping on a cup of tea, and sighing with annoyance. He talks to himself about how he doesn't understand why Spongebob and Patrick are together, after all that they've been through. Maybe it's because ending a lifelong friendship at random would hurt them both, or make one of them feel like more of a jerk than the other. As sounds of rustling come from Patrick's rock, and his house shakes around, forming small clouds of sand around it, Squidward walks up to Spongebob and actually has a genuine conversation with him. No screaming, no bullshit. Spongebob calmly greets him. Hi Squidward. Come. Squiddy, buddy, something the matter? Spongebob, I hate you, more than anything in the world, but honestly, I'm surprised you managed to kick it off for this long. Kick it off? Squiddy, what do y'all mean? I'm talking about Pinhead. Who? Patrick, what about him? Listen, I'm not trying to make myself look good here. I know I've laughed at your misfortune in the past, but that was because all I ever wanted was peace and quiet. I know that doesn't excuse anything, but Patrick, he's, well, bad news. Is this about the time he ate your sea cucumber garden last night? Because I can- No, I can get more seeds for that. What I meant to say is, attention is all he ever cares about. Trust me, I've been watching, and I can safely say- Squidward is interrupted by Patrick opening the rock, wearing a cone-shaped helmet and holding an oversized clamshell meant to replicate the snowboard. SpongeBob pats Squidward on the shoulder and tells him that they can talk later, as they are getting ready to go planboarding. Squidward raises an eyebrow, and asks if they really know what they are doing, before bringing up the many accidents that went down on Mount Everbottom. The two nod, and Squidward tells SpongeBob not to come crying to him if they get hurt, before going back inside of his home. A bubble transition appears, and SpongeBob is on top of a snowy mountain with Patrick. SpongeBob exclaims that Squidward was being silly earlier, and if the mountain was dangerous, there would be a sign telling them not to go down. Patrick agrees, and they share a quick chuckle. They ride down the mountain on their clan boards, dodging trees, rocks, and even that one I can explain fish guy, for comedic effect. Patrick turns around and does a few tricks on his clan board to SpongeBob, such as doing a handstand and pretending to fall asleep. SpongeBob's eyes widen and he yells at Patrick to look out. Before Patrick can even get a glimpse of what was behind him, his clan board gets a big log in the middle of the ride down, and he gets launched off. He spins around in the air, flailing his arms and legs around, before finally crash landing onto his knee. A sickening snap can be heard, and Patrick screams so loud that it echoes throughout the mountain. <laughs> S 
SpongeBob hears this, and quickly jumps off of his board to rush to Patrick's aid. He begs Patrick to speak to him, asking if he's okay. Patrick cries, and yells at SpongeBob to call an ambulance. SpongeBob races to a payphone, conveniently placed on the side of the mountain, and dials 911. The scene then cuts to black, with the sounds of Patrick's sobs echoing and fading out along with it. The scene then cuts to SpongeBob outside of the ER, biting his nails and pacing around the waiting room, freaking out. Other doctors can be heard chattering throughout the hospital. Oh dear Neptune, please be okay, please be okay, please, please, please! Suddenly, a door opens behind SpongeBob, and a doctor peeks his head out to speak to him. Mr. Squarepants, would you like to come and see how your friend is doing? Is he okay? Is he? The doctor sighs and opens the door, letting SpongeBob into the hallway. He leads him to a room that says four on it, and SpongeBob begins twisting his tie in paranoia. The doctor slowly opens the door, and SpongeBob walks in with his eyes shut. He slowly opens his eyes. He's greeted by Patrick, wearing a cast on his broken leg and sitting on a wheelchair. However, he's smiling, as if this didn't affect him one bit. SpongeBob rushes over to Patrick and hugs him, bawling his eyes out. SpongeBob! Oh Patrick, I'm so sorry! I should have never taken you to that mountain! What was I thinking? I should have listened to Squidward! Ugh, stupid stupid stupid! SpongeBob sobs for a few seconds, and Patrick pats him on the back as ocular streams of tears shoot out from SpongeBob's eyes. The doctor approaches SpongeBob and gently shakes his shoulder to get his attention, and he seems to slowly calm down as he speaks. Mr. Squarepants, your friend has fractured his fibula from the fall. We have estimated that recovery will last at least six to eight weeks, as it is a minor injury. Patrick's leg will regenerate sometime after that time period, but to make sure he doesn't put too much weight on himself, he's going to need someone to take care of him. I'll do it, Doctor. It's my fault that this happened, so it's the least I can do. Patrick, I'll take you to my place, okay? Try not to move. Patrick gleefully nods. He seemed quite unfazed by the fact that he broke his leg, and that will be emphasized later on in the script. Cue the bubble transition. SpongeBob takes Patrick to his home, and rolls the wheelchair inside, before picking him up and placing him on his couch. He rolls the wheelchair out of the way and, once again, apologizes to Patrick for getting him hurt. Patrick laughs and tells him it's fine, as he at least gets an excuse to hang out with him more. SpongeBob stops and thinks for a moment, and then a light bulb appears above his head. He dashes off screen, and within two seconds, he comes back with a service bell. The kind you would see in a luxurious hotel when you need the receptionist's attention. He informs Patrick that if he ever needs something, like the bathroom or something to eat, just give him a ring and he'll be there in no time. Just as he walks off, Patrick rings the bell, and SpongeBob comes back asking if he needs anything. Patrick tells him that he was just testing to see if it worked. The first day goes somewhat well for SpongeBob. While yes, he had to bathe, feed, and clothe Patrick, he wasn't very demanding during the first day. Before bed, they even had popcorn and watched a movie together. A shot of SpongeBob's house shows up. The setting goes dark, and then back to daylight again a few times, signifying that around a week passed. It then cuts back to SpongeBob's living room, with Patrick sitting on the couch and watching TV. He has a 5 o'clock shadow on his face and he looks bored, almost impatient. On the TV is some sort of comedy show with a bunch of sock puppets. Patrick rings the bell, and SpongeBob comes dashing in within a millisecond. He does a little soldier salute. Need something, Pat? I'm hungry. I want pizza. Can you say please? Pizza! No, Patrick. Please. I don't need a lecture, Sponge. I want pizza for dinner. No questions asked. Just pizza. Ha, huh, you're probably just cranky from your leg. Maybe I can take you somewhere later. I'll get the pizza ordered. Make it snappy. SpongeBob groans and walks away. Patrick wasn't so difficult to deal with a week ago, and he wondered what exactly got into him just now, but he tried to pass it off as just leg pain. 
He rings up a pizza place and orders a box of pepperoni pizza with a side of breadsticks. Once he hangs up, he hears the bell ring again. Patrick, the pizza won't be here until- I want particle chips! But I just ordered you pizza. I'm starving, and I need a snack to pass the time. Just go get it. Uh, why do you have to nag so much? Just be patient. Stop yelling at me, SpongeBob! Why are you treating me like this after I broke my poor leg? You caused this! SpongeBob inhales, then apologizes before going into the kitchen to get a bag of barnacle chips from his pantry. As he's about to hand him the chips, he hears a knock on the door. SpongeBob tosses the chips onto Patrick's lap and walks over to answer it. Oh, I'm a Squidward. Hey! Just came to check up on things. I heard Patrick's in a wheelchair now. Yeah, gotta take care of him. It'll take a while, but I'm sure he'll get better, eventually. Well, I told you not to go to the mountain, didn't I? I warned you that this would happen. I know that. Squidward, I know. You don't have to remind me that I'm a terrible listener, okay? I just wanted us to have something fun to do, an excuse to get out of the house during the weekend. And I didn't come up with any other options. I'm sorry, okay? Why are you apologizing to me? I ugh, never mind. How is the Krusty Krab doing? Did Mr. Krabs find someone to handle the grill while I'm away? Krabs hired Sandy to work the grill. She said she's been watching you for a while, and she practiced making her own patties at home. Haha, <laughs> Neptune bless her. I was afraid that the place was gonna go down the gutter, but if she's handling the kitchen, I'm happy- SpongeBob, the remote's too far! I'll be there in a minute, Pat! Squidward's eyes squint and he exhales, before rubbing his forehead in frustration. There's a moment of silence between the two. Then, a fish dressed in all red comes by with a pizza and to-go box. Upon seeing him, Squidward takes his tentacle off of his face and says one last thing to SpongeBob before heading home. You're gonna break eventually! Just as SpongeBob reaches into his wallet to pay for the pizza, Patrick impatiently barks out his name. He then quickly tosses the money in the delivery fish's fin and tells him that his tip is five dollars before slamming the door. Gary suddenly slithers up to SpongeBob and lets out some sarcastic meows. Gare Bear, I know Patrick's getting hard to handle, but let's try to give him some time to adjust. He did get into an accident after all. Meow. A montage plays of Patrick making SpongeBob's life a living hell, by forcing him to take him to crazy places on his wheelchair, buying tons of food, and even turning him into his entertainer. In a few of the clips, Patrick seems to be grabbing his leg and bellowing while sitting down, presumably to guilt trip. A time card pops up. Twelve weeks later. Patrick's eyelids are now a much darker shade of purple, and there are visible bags underneath them. Even after weeks, he's still sitting on SpongeBob's couch and watching TV, while at the same time, tiresomely playing with a bouncy ball, throwing it at a wall and catching it again. There's sound effects of cooking ambience coming from SpongeBob's kitchen, which is the only area fully lit up. He rings the bell, and SpongeBob comes trudging in, sweating. Dinner's almost ready, okay? Can you wait five minutes? Will five minutes heal my leg? I don't know what'll make your leg feel better, okay? I took you to the doctor after eight weeks, and it still hurts when you try to walk, so he told us to just wait it out. And whose fault is that? I swear to Neptune, if you remind me of the mountain one more time, SpongeBob is about to continue speaking, but then he groans and hurriedly marches back into the kitchen to finish the food. Patrick continues playing with the ball, and then sticks it into his mouth, gnawing on it like a dog. It then slips from his teeth, and goes rolling on the floor. He pounces in front of the TV to get the ball, gently pawing on it like a cat, before standing up and putting it into his mouth again. Yes, you heard that right. Patrick stood up, with his cast still on his leg. We did what we could to make Patrick as unlikable as possible here, but unlike the episodes from seasons 6 to 9 where it was meant to come off as funny, even though half of the time, it wasn't. We had him like this for a much more serious reason. 
At this point, the cooking ambience stops, and SpongeBob's footsteps can be heard as Patrick bites on his bouncy ball. Patrick, why are you standing? Patrick freezes, and his pupils slowly drift to the right. The camera slowly pans that way, revealing SpongeBob behind him, holding a tray of what seems to be spaghetti. SpongeBob's eyes are all the way open, his pupils are constricted to tiny dots, and he has a frown that extends across his whole face. He lets go of the tray, letting spaghetti and meatballs spill onto the sandy floor. SpongeBob begins shivering in place, as Patrick tries to explain himself. Um, oh well, hehe, <laughs> I suddenly feel better. Thanks, Sponge. Bob? I've been taking care of you for 13 weeks. SpongeBob's eye twitches furiously, and his eyes turn bloodshot. His heart pounds, and he has a hard time breathing with how angry he is. His fists clench. His voice is quiet, but slightly cracking with rage. I've been dealing with your incessant demands for over a month. I busted my back, bathing you, feeding you, reading you bedtime stories, all to be greeted with this. So SpongeBob, I'm sorry. Oh, Patrick, you can save it. I see your true colors. I've shown you compassion and love since we were in that nursery together. And I've taken so much of the problems you've caused as just you being a brainless twit. But that was all to make my life harder, wasn't it? SpongeBob's fists clench so tightly that veins start to show from his wrists. His brain starts to pulsate violently. He grabs onto his head and falls on his knees, gritting his teeth. You've been faking it, haven't you? You've... been... Patrick shivers. He's seen SpongeBob get mad, but never this mad. This wasn't just some slapstick loony freakout. This was akin to a mental breakdown, after dealing with so much torment. SpongeBob, I know what I did was wrong. I'm sorry. Let me make it up to you. You're only sorry that you got caught, Pinhead. SpongeBob finally stands up and slowly approaches Patrick, his fingers twitching into crooked directions. He raises his hand, pointer finger upward and opens his mouth, about to say something. Despite how much he wanted to spit out the truth to Patrick, he just couldn't. It was almost as if he felt angry, but sympathetic at the same time. On one hand, he wanted to slap Patrick until his head flew, but on the other, he felt awful for wanting to end their connections. They were supposed to be friends forever, until the end of time. What happened? SpongeBob lowers his hand, and collapses on the ground in a fetal position, snorting and gasping with despair. Get out. Let me help you out. Get out of my house! I can't even look at your face the same way anymore without thinking of all the lies. Get out, you barnacle fuck! SpongeBob points to the doorway as Gary approaches him. He'd curl up against SpongeBob's torso and give Patrick a disappointed glare, even hissing at him. He knew this would happen. The warning just wasn't enough. The scene fades as Patrick charges out of SpongeBob's doorway, with his head slumped downward. The sound of SpongeBob's door shutting played, and another time card slowly came into view. One day later. Patrick was sitting at a table by himself at the Krusty Krab, his face very droopy and dejected. Kamakani B started to play as Patrick sighed deeply. Sandy comes by and tosses a Krabby Patty on his table, before marching back to the kitchen, growling under her breath. Patrick looks down at his Krabby Patty, and pulls off the bun. He sees the pickles, ketchup and mustard all matted on top of a slice of cheese. The condiments on his patty started to morph into what looked like doodles of him and Spongebob. They'd frolic and play, the pickles would act as jellyfish, and so forth. It was like Patrick was looking back on his memories, and realizing what he has become after so long. He lived long enough to see himself turn into a monster. A person with no regard for other people, and only himself. And now, his one and only best friend is now gone. The regret started to seep in, and his eyes watered, but he rubbed them in an attempt to keep himself from crying. Mr. Krabs chased Plankton, still carrying the formula, but the two looked bored out of their mind, almost demotivated by what they were doing. 
Mr. Krabs eventually got in front of Plankton, blocking his way out, but instead of grabbing him with force, he held out his claw for Plankton to hop on. Mr. Krabs stepped outside, and looked Plankton in the eye. The two shared a groan. He hasn't answered any of me calls today. It's just not the same without the old sponge kid following along, ain't it Sheldon? Yep, wasn't I supposed to be the evil one? What happened to that? I dunno pal, I dunno. Alright Eugene, feel free to launch me whenever. Mr. Krabs proceeded to pull back Plankton's lower body like a slingshot and let him go, launching him over to the chum bucket, before walking back to his office. Squidward then comes up to Patrick's table. Patrick lifts his head up, and sees the squid leaned over to where his face met his. The look he gave Patrick said it all. How he disliked him from the very beginning, and the incident that went down the day before proved his point. He'd scoff, and pull out a notepad, before writing something on it. Mr. Krabs said that when you're done needing your slop, don't come back. Squidward places the piece of paper on the table, and walks back over to his station to work the register. Patrick looks at the piece of paper, and picks it up. One last message along with the price of his food is shown before Patrick's face becomes sodden with tears, and the animation fades to black. Karma's a bitch, isn't it, Sea Star? <laughs>